Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Amen. Good morning. Dear brothers and sisters, since we are in Lent, I decided to be a little more theological today. I hope you don't mind. I hope nobody will fall asleep. It's only nine to ten minutes to endure. Um, and I will quiz everybody at the social hall at the end. Just kidding about that. Uh, on this second Sunday of Lent, um, the church commemorates uh, one of the greatest saints of our church, St. Gregory Palamas. Um, and the reason for this remembrance is, is his contribution to the theology of grace and how we experience God here on earth. In reading today's gospel, we just heard it, where the, this paralytic is brought to Christ by four of his friends, I was very moved by Christ's reaction by his response and it's not the first time he did not wait for them to ask for mercy he knew what they wanted but rather seeing their faith and the daring effort of lowering this man through the roof he decided to forgive and to heal him and that was a free gift that was God's grace in action. So today I would like to talk about grace. We all know the word. I would like to talk about what it means, number one. And number two, why do we need it? So what is grace? The word grace, as we have it in uh, English, comes from the Latin gratus or gratia. Um, but it's the English translation of the Biblical Greek word charis, meaning something that brings delight, joy, and happiness, or favor. In the context of the Orthodox theology, grace refers to God's gift of our salvation. It is a free gift, and it's undeserved. We did not do anything to deserve it. It completely flows from God's mercy and love for us. After the fall of Adam and Eve, God gave them a promise that He will send them a Savior right away, as soon as they fell. Humanity's fall into sin requires forgiveness and healing of both body and soul. Because of sin, our entire being was affected. Pain, suffering, illnesses, and even death have become part of our lives. Something undesired by God happened to us. Evil entered into the world. So now we need help. We need restoration. So God's grace renders forgiveness of sins and healing. First of all, we need forgiveness of sins. Because sin is the root of all our problems in this world. Then we need healing of both body and soul. Which now suffer because of sin. God's gift of redemptive grace is not a mere magic wand taking our ailments and suffering away, but it, meant, it is meant to go deeper, to change our hearts, to offer forgiveness of sin. So Christ forgave the paralytic sins first. If you notice, He first says, your sins are forgiven. Then <clears throat> He dealt with the consequences of sin. Of course, Jesus could have done the healing first. After all, that's the reason why this uh, people came in for but he needs to get to the root of the problem first he needs to operate sin out of this man's heart and unless we pull out the weeds choking it a plant will not grow healthy even if we water it God's grace offers us power to live a life in Christ and it is essential for our salvation it is also God's presence in our life through grace we experience God's love Number two, <clears throat> let's go to why we need God's grace. <clears throat> and the answer to this important question is directly related to the purpose of our life. The purpose of our existence as God planned it for us. To be in communion with Him. The word theosis comes here 
is a helpful word to remember. <laughs> After creating Adam and Eve, as Genesis verse uh, 28 in chapter, in first chapter says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on earth. God's entire creation was meant to help us achieve our goal. We are not just another creature in this complex universe. No, no. We were destined to be the jewel, the crown of God's creation. We were destined to rule this created world and offer it back to God. To honor Him for this. God always wanted us to be close to Him. And in spite of our fall into sin, God never abandoned us. And yes, we were expelled from paradise as a consequence of our disobedience. But God the Father sent Jesus Christ, His Son, to, be, to bring us back. And also He sent His Holy Spirit to dwell in us and stay with us till the end of time to assist us in our spiritual endeavors. In Christ we found favor with the Father. He rectified Adam's disobedience by being obedient and dying on the cross. Salvation is now available to all who accept the Lord in faith and do His will. Our need for God's grace is essential in achieving our purpose. To be like God, to be holy. Through sin we lost access to paradise, but through grace we are readmitted in paradise. So far we learned about God's grace. That is a free gift, undeserved, empowering, bringing us closer to God, imparting His love and compassion to us, and absolutely necessary for our salvation. So what about St. Gregory Palamas? How did he improve our understanding of God's grace and our relationship with the Lord? Here is his contribution. <clears throat> Very brief. The idea of being able to experience God's presence, not just spiritually, but also physically. There are a few examples that he gives. He gives Moses' encounter with God on Mount Sinai. And the transfiguration of Christ when three of His disciples were blinded, were blinded by His divine glory. These are all human encounters with God, perceptible in physical form. Blinding light, clouds, smoke, and all of those. But these ex external manifestations of God's glory and grace, St. Gregory called them divine energies. This will be the word that I'm going to seek for at the coffee hour. Divine energies. Grace and divine energies. And since these energies flow from God's uncreated nature, they also are uncreated. And this is the orthodox point. Palamas' fundamental doctrine is this. Although God is inaccessible in His nature, yet He comes to us and shares His life in His energy. This outer manifestation that we can perceive sometimes. In conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, what we need to remember today is that God gives us power to achieve our salvation. That is grace. He gives us His divine grace and energy. It is an undeserved free gift given to all of those who have faith and do God's will. They came to Jesus and broke through the roof. They had faith, they had desire, they had will. And Jesus gave them grace. He forgave sin and gave healing. That's the process of our salvation. God gives power 
and we put the trust and the will. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always, forever and ever. Amen.